It is in his vision of a superior Singapore that Lee has revealed to the rest of the world probably the most controversial, if not indeed unacceptable, of his beliefs. People, he maintains, are not supposed to be equal. The human being is an unequal creature. This is a fact. And we start off with a proposition. All great religions, all great movements, all great political ideologies say, let us make the human being as equal as possible. In fact, he is not equal, never will be. We have to lock up people without trial, whether they are communists, whether they are language chauvinists or religious extremists. If you don't do that, the country would be in ruins today. We allow American journalists in Singapore in order to report Singapore to their fellow countrymen. We allow their newspapers to sell in Singapore so that we can know what foreigners are reading about us. But we cannot allow them to assume a role in Singapore that the American media plays in America. That of invigilator, adversary, and inquisitor of the administration. Why do you have so little faith in the ability of your people, so well educated, to make intelligent judgments on diversity of ideas, on competing news? I have been in office for now 29 years. I have won seven general elections since my first in 1959. I think that qualifies me at least to be able to say that I do know Singapore better than the questioner. Few, if any, in Singapore had the boldness to challenge the authorities, knowing the serious consequences that could be anticipated. They all knew their prime minister ruled with an iron hand. Whoever governs Singapore must have that iron in him or give it up. This is not a game of cards. This is your life and mine. I've spent a whole lifetime building this. And as long as I'm in charge, nobody's going to knock it down. So people always said that you are using the libel laws to threaten your well, political rivals. The same laws apply to me. Nobody has ever sued me for libel because I do not defame my enemies. He has never lost a case in Singapore, you know. And he has commenced something like, oh, more than 20-odd cases, and he has won in every one of them. Now let's stop and pause. How is it possible? What are our priorities? First, the welfare, the survival, of the people. Then, the democratic norms and processes, which from time to time we have to suspend. To Lee, public opinion polls are not worth a bean. His philosophy is that the nation's leaders should never dance to the public's tune. I ignore polling as a method of government. I think that shows a certain weakness of mind, an inability to chart a course. Whichever way the wind blows, whichever way the media encourages the people to go, you follow. You're not a leader. In America and Britain, or any other country that shares their principles of democracy and freedom, political leaders are constant subjects of caricature and satire and most are wise enough not to take offence. But not in Singapore. Lee insists that leaders in Asia should be accorded respect. If you keep on mocking your leader and poking fun at him every day, and he has no right of reply, it is very difficult for him to command your respect. I say without the slightest remorse, that we wouldn't be here, we would not have made the economic progress if we had not intervened on very personal matters, who your neighbour is, how you live, the noise you make, how you spit or where you spit, or what language you use. Had we not done that and done it effectively, 
we would not be here today. Lee is health conscious. He neither smokes nor drinks, and swimming is his daily exercise. <笑>有時沒有辦法了。如果太忙的時候。怪不得你的身體那麼好。一定要有有運動才可以。有沒有特別的養生知道。不要吃太多太多夠睡覺夠運動。工作也需要有興趣。It was indeed the Lee who took cleanliness and health seriously who set about transforming the unsightly Singapore of old into the Singapore that's known as the clean garden city of today. And even from my sick bed, even if you are going to lower me into the grave and I feel that something is going wrong, I'll get up. <laughs> 